All right, guys, Will, UTV Outlaws. Oh, man, you got going on this thing already, huh? Yeah, trying to get a head start here. There you go. Nice. So what are we doing today, Tim? Oh, man, I should have showed them. We could show them the play in the ball joints. You want to do yeah, that let's quick? do that, yeah. Get the camera roll. We'll do that real quick. I'm just going to put two lug nuts back on here real quick. I don't remember what side had the play, but for sure. I think they both had a little bit. So if you tighten up your tire, or if you have, obviously you leave your tire bolted on. Yeah, it's easier to see. Yeah. So just snug it back down. Let's see. Yeah, so if you zoom, you should be able to see it now, right? You can see it. Yeah, well, it's on the bottom one, but there's a plate in the way. But yeah, you can see it wobbling back and forth, so. It's got play. Both yeah. of them had play. I don't know, a couple months ago. The thing is, yeah, we this thing just runs down the strip, so. Uh, they still need to get changed out, but they do have to play. Out, but it's not as big of a deal. But we want something good on here. We didn't want to put something too heavy on here. Um, obviously, we're trying to keep this thing pretty light, keep it rolling down the strip. But what we're doing is we're doing ball joints. We're gonna get rid of the stock ball joints. We're gonna show you, and show you what we got. Um, do a demonstration on them. You know, uh, re yeah, kind of the same them. deal as before. Kind of same, yeah, same thing. The other ones, the we did stock versus Keller versus Hypertech. This time we're gonna do Hypertech, hi Hypertech heavy duty ball joint. So it's still a stock style ball joint to a stock. Polaris ball joint. So basically, they come in a nice little box. We were goofing around with this box. We had them, uh, uh, them snap things you throw on the ground. They're like little fireworks. It's kind of a mess in there, but I know you guys like this unboxing. So yeah, so they're made out of the same material as the captured. It's just it doesn't have the captured part of it, so I don't think I really need anything that heavy duty. I don't do a whole lot of jumping or anything like that, so I don't think I need anything that heavy duty. This so, is the same material, the 4340, I think it is. Yeah, I do know that the uh, started giving a nice little needle greaser because these are greasable. Yep, in our last video we kind of pointed that out, and so, so we they took our uh, advice on that. So this just, uh, here's a grease gun. So you have your regular grease gun, and that just basically pushes right in there, and then you can hit your greaser right there. And uh, it's just a little nub, and I think one comes with every two, two ball joints. Uh, we did mention that in our last video, and they, you know, took that into thought, and because not everyone knows what a needle greaser is, and uh, obviously I have one for, doing U-joints on Jeeps and stuff because you can't have like a big Zert fitting hanging off a U-joint when it's tight clearances. So you use these and then they can't get knocked off. So basically, I mean, a regular Zert fitting could get just broke off essentially. So the needle greasers are nice. But uh, no, they look they look nice. I uh, would like to compare them, see what, see what they look like. But that's all you said, nice packaging. You said on the captured too, they put zip ties in the box. So that's something else that yeah, we pointed so out. Yeah, so on the last one, you know, I mentioned that I like putting zip ties around here and here. Now this one is a press fit uh, rubber boot that like you have to, it's really hard to fight it up and round this lip. So basically you don't even have to take this off here. This is locked on here. And then you'll just press it through. You have your snap ring. Your snap ring hits that keyway right there. This is the difference between the captured, like we pointed out the last time. Captured locks both top and bottom. This presses through, and this is what retains it. Now the press also retains it too, but if they get wore out or you use, you go through a lot of ball joints like I did, they start getting play, then the press fit don't really do nothing. Then you're just riding on this. But Will's machines never hit ball joints. Um, 
He ain't really doing no jumping or anything crazy. He does slap down sometimes on wheelies, but... Or I'll bomb around the dunes, hitting some whoops and yeah, stuff like that. But the jumping's are, really what kills ball joints. These are going to be way heavier duty than stock. And that's yeah. the whole point of these. These are a more affordable uh, ball joint than, like, say, the extreme. But, like, if you're out rock bouncing and banging it up mountains and jumping, probably should go with the extreme. But if you're just trail riding and riding the dunes, I mean, you're going to be fine with these. Yep. So we're going to get started on this. We're going to time lapse this side. And... Uh, once we get that apart, then we'll get the parts up here, compare them, and then we'll show you the video going back together. Sounds good. All right, guys, so I just took the snap ring. This is the side we're time lapsing, but I don't know that it's going to be like this on the other side, so I wanted to show you this. But I got this snap ring off. Now, if you look here, I ain't done nothing with the snap ring still on there, but look at that little tiny, you know, paper yeah. gap right yep. there. That's where the ball joint is already trying to, you know, push up because the shock is trying to push this down, and the spindle and the lower control arm is trying to push it back up. And mm -hmm. the only thing that's holding it in is the snap ring. So it might have made some room in there, or but it's pushed itself back some. So yeah, I wanted to show you that. So it's up against the snap ring right now. Oh yeah, it's really hard up against the snap ring. I'm trying to. Yeah. I went to go try to get it out, and I realized that man, it ain't coming out. It's hung up. So that's when I noticed that gap. So I'm gonna knock it back down, take pull it out, the snap ring, and then then pull it out. But I wanted to show you that because I don't know if it's gonna be like that on the other side. But that's the big deal with the captured, gotcha. you know, because it locks this area together. Gotcha. So All right, guys, so this side is completed other than greasing it, but I'm going to show you greasing it one time. I'm not going to grease it on time lapse. You don't really get, you know. A good visual. Yeah, a good visual of it. So we're going to go ahead and compare these parts. We've got the parts out of this side. We've got the new parts here we can open up. Got the old one sitting here. I feel like we already did an unboxing. This is unboxing 2.0. Well, we already used the parts, unfortunately, <laughs> but it's all right. Yeah. We're not really. This is not to unbox it, but basically. I just want to compare the two. Now, here's something Will pointed out as we were talking off off camera. He was looking at these, and okay, so I can feel a little play right here. One's worse than the other, and I can feel a little play right here. Now, these are perfectly good trail ball joints. You know, these are something you throw yeah, in a bag. Yeah, in a bag. Yep. Throw in a bag and keep them because they're good. Say you hit something, you snap snap it off. You can throw another one. You know, one back in there. But I showed you how it was kind of press. You know, pop, trying to pop out. Um, that's one thing. Um, there's another thing. Oh, so what I was saying is, so you don't really feel a whole lot of leverage here or uh, play, but when you hit the tire on, the tire works as leverage. So the longer something is, it works as leverage. So right now you might not feel a whole lot, but when you grab that tire and you move the tire, yeah, that's when you really feel it. And that's how 
like so let's say your tire was only this big around there wouldn't be that much leverage and strain on the ball joints and the ball yeah joints and if you got 35 forever. if you got 35s on here obviously you're going to see a lot more yeah there's a lot more play and leverage yeah. but so obviously these are hyper tech heavy duty ball joints which i didn't know right off the bat these are our adjustable so when this gets play so one thing that i see that's nice here is it's greasable and it's adjustable so this what i think this key this this uh snap ring right here comes off and there's a little screwdriver and allen wrench right back there and you can back that out and you can take and turn this if you look close you can see it move right now and the keyway is keeping it mm -hmm. and then this is keeping the the keyway locked in there to where if yeah. it does loosen up it can't come out uh, correct so basically I think once you get enough wear and you go, you know, and you feel your ball joints, if greasing it doesn't take the play out, because greasing it always helps taking the play out, but stock ball joints, you can't grease. Yeah. So, that being Yeah, so said, if they ever need tightening up, you it's tight yeah, so you, just keep you can adjust it, yep. Normally, but if you want to adjust them, you just pop this off. It does, you don't have to take it out of the machine or nothing. You just pop this ring off, and then you'll be able to loosen up that pin right there and turn this and take the play out screw it in which would take the in and out play out here and then you could get it to the next notch obviously it's got to have enough play to it where you can go to the next notch right, as because well. you don't want to make this crazy tight like in the yeah. last video you don't want to make this crazy tight to where you can't turn it you got to be able to continuously turn it it's got to have movement so it's yeah. got to have just a smidge of play. so you got to be able to get to that next notch but <clears throat> other than that okay so the head so this is where it mounts to the control arm this is what touches and this is what's touching so, I mean, a little bit taller there. But other than, like, so stock ball joint, it makes it to where you can put the ball joint in there, and at any point you can get the bolt through. Where with this one, which isn't a big deal, a lot of them are like that, you have to line this up. So this turns. So you can line this up with where your bolt, you have to push the knuckle back on and push the bolt through. And so you'll just have to make sure that you can see that notch in there. Uh, when you're lining it all up, but no, they look they look awesome. I like that they're adjustable and uh, greasable is a really big thing. Adjustable is a really big thing too because once it gets play, they're basically garbage. I mean, you can't do nothing with them. These you can turn. Yeah, up. we might have mentioned too earlier in the video. So we put those capture ball joints. We were very impressed with them. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, do their heavy duty you no know, non captured ball joint in my machine. Um, we were very impressed with, you know, the yeah, set that liked, Tim got, yeah, so I was like, let's keep it rolling. We did a good comparison on another company that is known for being nice products, and we compared theirs to it, and uh, we've come to realize that, you know, Hypertech's been around forever. So, I mean, who wouldn't want to build it and design, design a good heavy-duty part? So, we're like, hey, we like your parts, you know, we'd like uh, another set of your ball joints, we just don't need something as extreme as the captured ball joints from yes. Will's machine. Yep. And uh, ended luckily up, uh, they had these and they work out perfect. Yeah, they had these and they worked out perfect and uh, turned out awesome. And so, so we're going to be doing a review on his capture. We're going to be doing a review on these as well. Um, we mentioned in our previous videos every six months. We're going to try to review all the parts that we've recently installed. Correct. So, uh, yeah, we'll show you guys step by step putting this all back together. What's that dumb look for? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a 2017. So, T25 Torx. We'll take the shield out of the way. That's a 2017 T25 Torx? Yes, 2017 Razor. Oh. Hey, man. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if all machines have this little oh, I got you. shield here. I was so, going to say, you know your tools real, real well. The you nose are this? 2000. You no, no, yeah. just keep it rolling. Right, anyways. <laughs> Whoa, button it up over there, Buttercup. <laughs> anyways, I, you know, I'm just trying to make sure I come across everything, so... Well, you, anyways, came, you came across. Anyways, I don't know if the shield's on. I don't remember if this shield was on mine. So, yeah. it's an 18. So, this is a 17. That's what you need for that. You're going to need a 15. This gun might not be enough. Take a caliper off. Not happening. So. Okay, so now that you got that off, you can slide your caliper, lay it over here, push the bolts out. 
So then you're going to need to get this car key out. So, same thing last video, you guys, we just basically get rid of these because you bend them up. I got so many new ones, it's not even worth It's not worth trying to salvage them. Yeah. And it's nice knowing you have one. Because metal, once you flex it a couple times, I mean, the metal gets weak. I'm not saying that it's really going to harm this, but this is a 27 millimeter socket. Takes the axle nut off. You got a washer here. I'm just going to leave it inside there. Actually, from the factory, they had them double washers and I converted to this one big oh, single. Yeah, yeah, for 17. They yeah, they that. were yeah. cracking them. Yeah, so then once we get the knuckle off, we'll wipe the inside and the outside of the knuckle because there'll be sand and dirt and grit. You don't want that getting back in the bearing. So now we can go ahead and pull the ball joint bolts, which is going to be a 15 as well and a 15 wrench. We'll do the bottom. Right, so and your top one. We'll go ahead and knock this out real quick. Let's see. There's that one. See all that? sand and the grease. Yeah, gathers it's not in there. The bearing, but it's from where the grease pushes out the backside. Yeah. It's not the end of the day, but we want to clean it out. And uh, before this thing really goes back out, it'll all get greased. I'm not really going to grease the wheel bearing to show you that. It's not what we're doing here, but let me uh, let me grab a rag and a couple other things I need, and I'll show you pull the ball joints up. All right, so I grabbed a rag to wipe this off and just checking these axles, and they don't feel like they have any binds, so... I'm good with that. We took a bungee cord and pulled this out of the way just to hold it out of the way so you guys just make things a little easier. There, yeah. Um, so grab you some snap ring pliers and uh, you can then pop your snap rings, which is always fun. Okay, so there's one snap ring. And then the other one, let's see where it's at. Yeah, see this one's this one's pushing up on two seat gap yeah, there. Yeah, yep, a little gap. Yep. So I'm gonna take and tap it back down. Knock that back down. I'll you just use the same socket that I got the axle nut off with. There you go. Now it should be pretty free. I have a screwdriver ready so you can help pull it off. Oops. Yeah. When Tim's got his uh, safety glasses on in case yep, that pops into yep. his eye. What are you doing, Biggie B? Yeah. Uh huh? Alright, so I just normally knock these out by hand. Oh, that. Yeah, we got the snap ring off, so we're good. So there's that one. And then same thing here. I'm just pushing down a little bit. Give it a, a some spring here. But, back force, yeah. Yeah, some ring. There's that one. Let's see if they got any play. Still pivot good. This one's got a lot of play compared to that other one. Yeah. The other side didn't have nowhere near this play. Quite a bit there. Yeah. That one's still got some play, but nowhere near as bad as that one. That was probably the worst out of all of them. And like, all these are still good as spares. So you can just take all four. Throw them in a box. box. Yep. Put them up on a shelf somewhere. Throw them in your trailer so when you're out wheeling, somebody yep. can run back and get them if you got to get them or whatever. Just make sure you save these clips. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab the other ball joints we'll show you going back together. Alright, so just take your new ball joints. You want to try to get them down in there far enough as you can. Try, like, So if you're using a press, which is kind of a pain to be honest, which I have one. I used it on the other side. You should see that. You should have seen that in a time lapse. But let's try to knock this in there square. Get it good and started to where if you do use a press you can keep going with it.
Well, this one, it's got a little spot. This is sitting, it locks it in there. <clears throat> Basically, you want to go around the ball joint on the bottom. You've never used one of these. Now, I can't get an impact on there, so we'll use a 7 8 socket. Most of them are 7 8 sockets, so just try to do this by hand here. See it pressing slowly. You want to try to make sure it's going in even and straight. All right, so this is the bottom ball joint we're starting on now. So I just started it in there by hand. Ugh. Someone's out there doing a number on that power steering pump. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just slowly tighten her in there. You can see it sliding together. Just want to make sure it's going as even as possible. There we have that. We'll get uh, some snap rings on. Alright, so grab your snap rings and uh, so make sure that it goes in its groove all the way around. You'll feel it close and lock on. Then you know that, you know, for some reason, if it does want to come out, it's backed by that snap ring. You got your other snap ring here. This one ain't popped in. There we go. There's one. There's two. Let me double check it. Then, okay. So that's that. And then I take the grease fittings out so you can't damage them. I got a Screw it into place. Crank it down a little bit with a wrench, and you're good to go. Okay, so that's that. We can go back together. We wiped it up pretty good. I'm trying to show you what's going on here. So turn your knuckle, put her back in there. So this is where I was talking about. This is the pain right here. But this is where I was talking about. You need to line this up with this. So you'll turn this. Get it to where it looks like it's going to be. Straight. Once you get the angle right on this, it slides right together. Normal. But it's just, yeah, it's just getting the right angle. Okay, so that slid on after that initial start. Let's see if we can get this lined up. So this is where you'll have to slide it up and down find your sweet spot. There it is. Okay, that's got a nut on it. Now this one's going to be the same thing. So, turn this a little bit. There we go. Okay. 
hopefully it's lined up. It's good. So basically, those are in. You can go ahead and tighten those up. Those are your 15s. My washer on here already. You can hear it right here. So that's already in there. You can take your axle nut. Make sure it's in there and tubs all the way in. Put your 27 again. All right, so go just make sure this castle nut and the hole is lined up. It looks like it's pretty close, but that's pretty good. Powder pin here. Bend it over. There's that. Now you got two 15s for your caliper. Okay, make sure you don't tangle your brake line. Spread your brakes apart. Get that lined up. Need a bigger barn and a lift, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, we're just a couple guys out here in a garage. That's Trying to make it happen. Maybe one day. Oh, it'll be happening. Unfortunately, I was going to build a barn for two years, and it just ends up being more and more parts for this. Yeah, more side-by-side -side parts. <laughs> so, you know, that's how it is. So we got the shield. See, this side looks like the bracket, so that's how I'm going to put her back on here. So now, really, it's grease all four. No more extra parts here besides the old bent up pin we're not going to use uh, to grease them. Uh, I can show you how to grease them real quick. Let me grab this little greaser. Here's the one it comes with. Actually, here's both. So every two, you buy them as a pair. What were they like? 150 bucks or? 125 bucks a uh, pair. Yeah, so if you get two ball joints, it comes with a grease fitting. Uh, needle greaser and uh, so I guess if you you know wear out two ball joints you can just buy two at a time you don't have to buy all four but yep for a good ball joint yeah you can't beat it I think that's a good price and yeah they, and they give you this that's the hardest part you get these and people are like what is this well I think it's a grease fitting but how do I use it so that's this so we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate the little greaser too my grease gun is hiding right there all right this should be a lot easier There's that. We'll go ahead. Call it a day there. Get this wiped off. But yeah, there you have it. That's some new ball joints. They uh, look really nice. I uh, think they'll hold up real well. Oh, I think they're going to hold up great and to be able to adjust the play out of them and grease them. I mean, Honestly, stock parts, you know, are normally not greasable. Some companies have some greasable stuff, but not all of them. I'm talking about OEM. And uh, if you could grease stock ball joints, even just greasing them, it would probably make them last a whole lot longer. Yeah. And uh, making a product that's greasable and adjustable, I think is, uh, I don't know, probably top notch. I mean, I think uh, 
that should really hold up, especially in your machine. I mean, yeah. you do a lot of racing. Granted, you use four-wheel drive, so it's torquing a lot on the front end. All the power that this machine's putting out still tweaking on them ball joints, you know. Yeah, and I still bomb around the dunes, yeah, hitting bomb around and the stuff dunes, like that, so yeah. Uh, I think uh, they're going to be great. Yep. Uh, I think if you're just an average person, I, I wouldn't even say average, anybody, these are good ball joints. But if you know, or if you're known for breaking ball joints, or if you're known for... Probably go with the extremes. Rock bouncing, yeah. you should probably go with the extremes. But I think these are... Uh, I mean, think about it. OEM with a snap ring lasted for how long, you know? This is four years old now, this machine is, and hasn't had a problem in, I don't know, what do you think's on your machine now? 1,100, 1,200 miles? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, but, and those ones that were in there could have went longer, but they do have some play. And yeah, they got some play. I just didn't want to risk it. Yeah, we don't like having anything wrong. We always like to change and upgrade stuff, so. If you guys are looking for a high-quality ball joint, I would have to say I recommend HyperTech Ball yeah. Joints. Yeah, go give those guys, uh, you know, check out the link below. They're, uh, they're, go check they're, them out. They've been around in the tuning industry and automotive industry and Jeeps and trucks for, you know, probably since the 70s. I don't know for sure, but I know for at least 30 years. We yeah. kill this compressor uh, for the last 30 years. So, uh, you know, they're new to the side-by-side -side market, but I really think uh, they have a part that's worth talking about. So... If you guys want some good quality parts, go check them out. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, let us know what you want us to do. Um, check us out on social media stuff. Yeah, social media. We're really starting to move and try to do a lot more stuff on social media. We, we're on TikTok now, UTV Outlaws. Uh, our website's about to be up, or this video, it will be up. For yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, if you uh, want guys want to support us, merch and we're stuff like that. We're yeah. trying to post more, be more interactive with you guys. So if you guys got something, you know, if you guys want parts you want us to try out, if we're interested in running those type of parts on our machine, hit us up. We just want to make sure you guys get, um, you know, a good honest opinion on some parts. Thanks. been looking at getting maybe a bigger truck so I got this trailer you can see right behind me right now uh, big trailer full width um, kind of on the heavy side I pull around with a little diesel Colorado um, Tim's always giving me a hard time about it you know my little baby truck pulling this big old trailer so today's the day we're going to head over to the Chevy dealership and we're gonna go ahead and do a little upgrade here so uh, Tim doesn't know anything about it so we're gonna go over we're gonna surprise him with this whole thing and uh yeah so you guys will see that coming up here shortly 